What's the title of the piece? This is called An Admiration of Goya, a famous Spanish painter. Who's one of my heroes? And, um, can you tell us a bit, a bit about it? Why does it exist? Well, yeah. I started as a painter many years ago, over 50 years ago, I guess, and gradually uh, I, at that time, became somewhat dissatisfied with paintings because they don't change. They're, they can be ambiguous, they can change in your head, but they can't change on the, on the, on the painting surface. So I decided to do something that, while I was still painting, um, was, in a sense, was um, able to be changed. For example, if you look at the box when it's closed, you have a painting there if you want. And you have another painting there. And you have another painting there. And here. And of course, they, they do have to sort of locate to each other because the whole thing is a, is a, a design. Okay, here it is closed. There's a little there's a little lock on it here if you want to keep it closed. But usually we take that off and um, I'll just move it little bits and pieces. The theory is that you move it and leave it for a while. But uh, because we don't have a while, um, I'll just actually um, just keep moving it here. So you can see it goes from white and and almost black is dark brown, but it's, but and then it goes into various colors, as as it gets uh, wider and wider. So, the viewer's investigation of the object is a really important part of how absolutely, it's intended to be viewed. Absolutely, and that brings up an interesting uh, problem. If you are working as a museum guide, you are told don't let anybody touch anything. Mm -hmm. uh, well, you don't want someone lighting a match on a Rembrandt. Um, but uh, if you don't, if you're not able to to open this and walk around it, or even just just turn it, but you just walk around it and see what it looks like from different sides, you lose about ninety percent of the uh, the aesthetic of of the of the box. You can't really you don't realize um, what it looks like partly open, partly closed. And there's something else, and that is that it's more fun, it's more difficult and more fun to make something like this work as a, as a work of art than it is a flat painting. Uh, at least I found that in the beginning. Now I'm not so sure. Lots of times in the history of art you see homage to someone, so homage to Goya, or homage to whatever. I thought it was just a little more interesting to say in admiration of Goya, because um, I, don't, I don't really see this as, I mean, I can't point you to a picture of Goya that I was imitating, um, but it means that I admired him to the extent that, that uh, it, was, it was going to um, it was going to influence me a bit in doing this, and I would like to do it as a as a praise. So, at what point in the creative process do you decide do you decide that it's um, that it's for that artist? Is it? Oh, I think I think I start in the drawings. I think I really start in the drawings. I knew I wanted something strange inside and and chain and uh, what it is. I don't know. I don't know. Um, Goya, by times, could be kind of um, bloody, do sides of meat and that kind of thing. So I think this does refer to to, to, to that sort of thing. Um, some some boxes are are particularly neat. This one is not overly neat because Goya was quite painterly. Although he could do beautiful portraits, his uh, uh, some of his. Uh, ones that he did for his own amusement, not portraits, but for example, Saturn eating his children, or uh, or this great one of just a black cat with its back arched on a wall, um, and they they were quite quite painterly, more like this kind of stuff.
to. I've done, I've done how many in admirations? I've done an admiration of Courbet. I've done, um, I've done five or six of them anyway. Um, so I, I, and it's nice to be able to, to tip your hat to somebody that you really, that you really like, whose work you really like.